the UPR, and me. My Guide to Participating in the UPR A publication by UPR Info and Child Rights Connect UPR Info is a non-profit, non-governmental organisation. It aims at promoting human rights through the Universal Periodic Review. To this end, UPR Info supports the engagement of all stakeholders, such as UN member states, parliamentarians, national human rights institutions, civil society organisations, media and academics in the UPR process. Child Rights Connect is an independent, non-profit organisation founded in 1983 as the ad hoc group for the drafting of the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Through its more than 90 member organisations, it has a worldwide reach that allows children's rights defenders, including children, to speak with one global voice. Author, UPR Info and Annabel Trapp, Child Rights Consultant. Project Coordinators and Content Development, Emma Grindoulis and Laura Sinner. Design, Layout and Illustrations by Esther Pesis. Copyright 2020 UPR Info, Child's Rights Connect, All Rights Reserved. Materials contained in this publication may be freely quoted, reprinted, reproduced or translated, provided credit is given to the source. Official versions of this guide were produced by UPR Info and Child Rights Connect in English, French and Spanish. Thank you all. With special thanks to Laura Sinner at UPR Info for creating the initial draft of this guide and to Mona Mubike and Ashley Shields, UPR Info and Ilaria Paulazzi and Emma Grindoulis, Child Rights Connect for their conceptualisation of the guide and providing inputs. Thank you to Tenna G. Laurent, UPR Info, Cynthia de Moron, and Celia Limpo, Child Rights Connect, for their assistance in the children's consultations and translations. A huge thank you to the over 140 children worldwide who helped us to develop and shape this guide by providing valuable ideas and suggestions during the children's consultations via an online survey or focus groups. UPR Info and Child Rights Connect wish to offer warm thanks to Emma Grindoulis for building and coordinating this process and to the following supporting organisations for their critical support in alphabetical order. Secodap, Venezuela, Child Leg Group Voice 16+, Albania and Save the Children Albania, Le Parlement des Enfants, Côte d'Ivoire, Save the Children, Bangladesh, SOS Children's Villages, Azerbaijan, Terre des Hommes Suisses, The Office of the Advocate for Children and Young People, New South Wales, Australia. UPR Info and Child Rights Connect express their gratitude to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Ireland the Foreign and Commonwealth Office of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, FDFA of Switzerland, Oak Foundation, CEDA, Save the Children, and Plan International for supporting this publication. What is in this guide? Introducing your guide to the UPR. The basics. What are human rights? What are the United Nations? What is the Human Rights Council? The UPR. What is it? Who is involved? What happens? How can I participate? Before the review? During the review? After the review? Further support. 
Be careful. This document uses some examples of violence against children. You don't need to read these if they make you feel uncomfortable or unhappy. Remember to speak to someone you trust about upsetting issues if you would like to. Introducing your guide to the UPR. The UPR is a mechanism the UN uses to improve everybody's human rights. In the UPR, the overall human rights situation of everyone living in every country in the world is examined by every other country. As a result, countries commit to improve the human rights situation for every single child and adult. It is an opportunity for children and adults to participate including those in diverse groups and those in more vulnerable situations who may otherwise not have their voice heard. As we will be finding out, civil society organisations, including human and child rights defenders like you, have a very important role to play in the UPR and are key to its success. This guide will help you learn more about the UPR and how you can be a part of it to improve the human rights situation in your country. It has been developed for all children aged between the ages of 12 and 17. It can also be used by anyone else who would like to participate in the UPR, including younger children. Many thanks to the 142 children and young people in Africa, North and South America, Europe, Asia, Central America and the Pacific who have been part of its development. Explaining the UPR process informs a larger group of children about this important process and how it could directly impact their lives for the better. Boy aged between 15 and 17, Albania. Abbreviations CSO Civil Society Organisation HRC Human Rights Council NGO Non-Governmental Organisation NHRI National Human Rights Institution OHCHR Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights SMART or SMART Specific Measurable, Achievable, Relevant and Time-bound. SUR, State Under Review. UPR, Universal Periodic Review. UN, United Nations. UNCRC, United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Some words to know. Advocacy. Telling people about something that is important to you and persuading them to take action to make a positive change. This might include adopting a law to end child marriage or spending money to build a school. Consulting. Finding out about each other's opinions on issues that they know about or have experienced. Implementation. To put a plan or commitment into practice. For example, to implement a recommendation to make schools more accessible to children who use wheelchairs, decision makers will need to organise construction work at several schools in the country. Lobbying. Trying to persuade a decision maker, e.g. government officials, to change actions, policies or decisions that are needed to improve people's lives. Monitoring. To follow and record the progress of something to see how successful or unsuccessful it is, or to check if something is being done properly. The basics. What are human rights? Human rights are things you are allowed to be, to do, or to have because you are human. Everybody has the right to life, the right to food and shelter the right to work, the right to education and the right to freedom of expression. You can read the full list of rights and fundamental freedoms that everyone has on the site youthforhumanrights.org. 
Human rights belong to everyone, no matter who you are or where you are. Cannot be taken away from anyone at any time. Are equally important. Are a responsibility we all share to respect each other, to help each other and to protect those in need. Some groups of people need extra protection because of who they are or the situation they are in. These people have extra rights, which are written down in UN documents called Human Rights Instruments. There are extra rights for people with disabilities, women and children, for example. Children have extra rights because of the special protection and care they need from birth until they become adults at the age of 18. Children's rights are written down in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, UNCRC. Unfortunately, children and adults are not always able to claim their rights, even though laws might be in place to protect them. For example, every day millions of children around the world are affected by violence and are not able to get the medical treatment they need or are forbidden to speak out about things that are important to them. Many others are treated unequally or discriminated against, every day just because of who they are. In many parts of the world, for example, girls are not allowed to go to school just because they are girls. Don't forget to find out about inequalities and challenge practices that stand in the way of equality for everyone. In particular, it is important to take gender equality into account in every moment of our thinking and what we do. Governments have the biggest responsibility to make sure that everyone, including children, can enjoy all their rights. When human rights violations happen, it is the government's job to make positive changes so that the situation improves for everyone. What is the United Nations? UN the United Nations is an international organisation that was created in 1945. It is currently made up of 193 countries, known as UN Member States, who work together to improve the world for everyone. Protecting human rights is one of their main responsibilities. What is the Human Rights Council? HRC. The HRC is a group of 47 countries responsible for the promotion and protection of all human rights. It comes together to discuss how to respond to human rights abuses around the world, including situations of urgent concern. Universal Periodic Review UPR What is it? The UPR is the process the Human Rights Council uses to monitor and improve the human rights situation in every country around the world. This includes children's rights. The UPR is universal because all states are reviewed and all human rights are addressed. A review because 42 states are reviewed every year. Periodic. Because each state is reviewed every four and a half years. The UPR meetings take place every year in Geneva, Switzerland, during January, May and October. Who is involved? States. All 193 member states of the UN are reviewed during the UPR. The state whose human rights situation is being examined in the UPR is called the State Under Review, S-U-R. Other states make recommendations about how to improve the human rights situations in the State Under Review. They are known as the Recommending States. Civil Society Civil society represents people's different interests, not necessarily the interests of the government. It includes civil society organisations, CSOs, and non-governmental organisations, NGOs, 
you should be able to support citizens at national or community levels to speak out about issues of concern to them. Civil society has a central role in the UPR process, providing independent information about the state under review, raising awareness on human rights issues and monitoring the state's progress in improving the human rights situation in its country. Children, children's groups and organisations are a very important part of civil society. It is not only your right to speak out about issues of concern to you, but you can positively influence decision-making in your country and improve the lives of thousands of other children and adults. You can do this with or without adults. Sometimes you might want to add an adult to discussions and other times you might prefer to discuss your issues with other children in other children's groups or organisations. For example, in 2020, a group of children's organisations called Consortium Nepal organised discussions with children in different parts of Nepal to learn about the UPR and support children to discuss the topics and issues that are important to them. They did this in lots of ways, including with poems, song, drama, stories, letters, quizzes and pictures. They then held a national consultation in Nepal's capital city, Kathmandu, where child representatives shared the key topics and issues that they discussed. A group of children then volunteered to write up the results and create a report which was submitted to the UPR. National Human Rights Institution NHRI An NHRI sometimes called a National Human Rights Commission, Council, or Ombudsman Office, is an independent group with responsibility to protect, monitor and promote human rights in a given country. Not every country has an NHRI. Some countries have a National Children Commissioner in charge of protecting children's rights. Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights OHCHR OHCHR is the UN agency specialised in the promotion and protection of all human rights. It organises the UPR. Diplomats Diplomats, sometimes called permanent missions, embassies or government state representatives, are people who represent their country in other countries. They can have a powerful role influencing decisions in your country too. Geneva diplomats represent their country at UN meetings in Geneva, including the UPR. Permanent missions Permanent missions are a group of people who represent their country at the United Nations. They can have a powerful role in influencing decisions in your country. Stakeholder a stakeholder is any person or organisation that is involved in a project or a process, like the UPR. You are a stakeholder. What happens? Every four and a half years, each state tells other states about the human rights situation in its country. A review meeting takes place where a group of states considers the information on the state under review taking into account information from the state itself, as well as information from civil society. Recommending states then present the state under review with recommendations to improve human rights for all its people. The UPR process takes place in three key stages. Before the review, report on implementation in preparation for the review, the review, information on the SUR is discussed in Geneva and a report is adopted. After the review, recommendations are implemented. When is your country's next UPR review? Where is it in the cycle now? Find out by searching for your country on the UPR Info website. How can I participate? 
Children and adults can contribute by improving the human rights situation in their country at every stage of the UPR by reporting on and raising awareness about the human rights situation in their community and making recommendations to improve its human rights situation, monitoring the positive or negative changes in human rights, organising or participating in events that can contribute to improving the human rights situation. Don't forget, it is your right to be heard and to influence all decisions which will affect you. Let's look at what happens at each stage of the UPR process and how you can be involved. How can I participate before the review? You and other stakeholders have a very important role before a country's UPR review takes place to tell others about any positive and negative changes in the human rights in your country. This is the time when other states need accurate information to learn about what's happening in the state under review. This information will help them make clear recommendations to the state under review about what it needs to do to improve its human rights situation. Let's look in more detail at how you can participate. How you can participate one year before the review. Discuss the human rights situation in your country with other children, young people and adults, listening to how their biggest human rights issues affect them. Select one human rights issue that you want to focus on and begin to write down what people have told you about that issue. Participate in meetings with children and adults in your community, region or national level to make sure that one of your views are heard. These could be meetings that your government is organising or meetings that anyone can arrange, including children. They might be meetings in person or online. Raise awareness by organising or joining an existing campaign to tell the general public and the media all about the UPR and the issue you have selected to speak out on. Can you think of any issues affecting children or adults in your country that you would like to change? To find out about these issues, who else would you like to speak to? Don't forget to ask children who might not usually be part of influencing decisions affecting them. This might include children living in remote areas or children with disabilities. How you can participate 6 to 10 months before the review. Use the notes you made in your consultations with others to write a shadow report. You might be able to contribute to a report that is already being written by a civil society organisation or you can also write your own report with other children. If you are working with a civil society organisation, you will only be able to submit one individual report per organisation but you can contribute to as many joint reports with others as you like. This report should always include how this issue has improved since the last UPR review or how it has got worse, new relevant issues that you are concerned about, recommendations to improve this issue. Recommending states might use your recommendations. Find out when your country's shadow reports are due by searching for your country on the OHCHR UPR webpage 8 to 10 months before the UPR review. When you are happy with your report, you can upload it on the OHCHR website. UPR Info can help you do this. Tip. Keep your report short and direct. If you are sending a single report, you can use up to 2,815 words to make your key points. Joint reports can use up to 5,630 words. 
UPR recommendations. To participate in the UPR, you need to have clear recommendations that your government could use to improve the human rights situation in your country. Recommendations are really important because states use these in discussions with other states. Before we go further, let's look at UPR recommendations in more detail. Experience has found that a state cannot implement recommendations that are not clear or it does not understand. Detailed recommendations clearly explain what the state should do. Specific recommendations are easier to monitor. Each recommendation should only address one issue with one specific action that the state should take. To write precise and effective recommendations, make sure they are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound or smart. This helps to identify the human rights problem and recommend what the state needs to do to make it better. Ask these questions to help your recommendations smart. Specific Does your recommendation refer to a specific human right or require a specific action? Measurable Can we measure progress in implementing your recommendation? Achievable. Does the state have what it needs to meet your recommendation on time? Relevant. If it is implemented, will your recommendation improve the human rights situation in your country? Time-bound. Does your recommendation say when you expect the state to implement it? All recommendations should be implemented by the next review, but shorter deadlines can be suggested. If you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you have drafted a smart recommendation. Here are some examples of UPR recommendations. A recommendation from Chile to Bahrain. Adopt a national policy on children with disabilities. A recommendation from Hungary to Chad. Allocate at least 25% of the national budget for education and eliminate all discretional fees in order to ensure free primary education for all children. Do you think the recommendations above are smart? Why? Why not? Write a recommendation you would like to make to your country. How can you participate two to four months before the review? It is now time to tell everyone about your issue including the recommendations that you made. You can do this by writing or speaking to people including foreign diplomats working in your country or at the UN in Geneva. Prepare a summary of your report in an advocacy fact sheet. Contact diplomats that are engaged on the issue that you're interested in. You can contact them by email or telephone at that country's embassy in your country. Make sure you send them copies of your fact sheet. It will help them to address your issue at your country's UPR and use your recommendations. If it is possible and you have permission and support from adults, Visit the foreign embassies in your country to convince recommending states to address your issues of concern when they speak to your state at the review of your country. Contact Geneva diplomats at least three months before the review to persuade them to use your recommendations. Tip! Find a list of Geneva diplomats on the UNOG website. Speak directly to diplomats in your country about your human rights issue or issues of concern at your country's in-country pre-session meeting. We're about to find out more about this and what you can do. Who are some of the diplomats in your country? What issues are they interested in? Fact sheets 
A fact sheet presents key information. Diplomats do not have a lot of time, but they can read a fact sheet very quickly to learn about your urgent key messages. Hopefully your fact sheet will persuade diplomats to speak out on your issue and use your recommendations. They are a must-have for your advocacy. Your fact sheet should clearly highlight 1. A summary of key issues from your country's last UPR 2. Progress the government has made on your issue 3. Remaining challenges and impacts 4. Recommendations for further action At the end of this guide you will find a template or a draft as a simple fact sheet. An example of a fact sheet prepared by the Civil Society Collective on the Situation of the Rights of Children in Sri Lanka. Tip. Make sure you have printed enough copies of your fact sheet to use as an advocacy tool so that you can share it with diplomats in your country or in Geneva. You can share your fact sheet by email if you can't meet the diplomat in person. What is an in-country pre-session? In these meetings, up to 12 representatives from civil society organisations speak to representatives from embassies that are based in your country. Panel members present the progress that has been made since the last UPR review, the challenges remaining on a chosen thematic issue, and suggest further recommendations to improve the human rights situation in your country. These meetings are held in your country's capital city two months before the review. Pre-session meetings are very important opportunities for civil society representatives, including you, to speak directly to the recommending states on the human rights situation in your country and suggest recommendations that recommending states can make to your country at the review. We will learn more about how to participate in pre-sessions in Geneva on the next page. I want more children to participate in the UPR, like a World Assembly of Children. This way everyone will be able to say what is happening in their country and share their experiences so that more people will know. Girl, aged between 12 and 14, Côte d'Ivoire. How you can participate one month before the review. Participate in your country's Geneva pre-session. What is a Geneva pre-session? A Geneva pre-session is similar to an in-country pre-session meeting, but it only has six speakers, and it takes place in Geneva, Switzerland. These meetings are organised by UPR Info. Many more pre-sessions take place in Geneva than in-country, but you can take part in Geneva pre-session from your own country by applying to speak at the pre-session on UPR Info's website. To take part in a pre-session taking place in Geneva, you will need to be able to travel all the way to Geneva. If the pre-session is being organised online, you will be able to participate from your own country via an online video link. Check with UPR Info to find out more. How to apply to participate in a Geneva pre-session To speak at this important meeting, either remotely or in person, you need to send an online application to UPR Info who select who can speak on the panel. If you are chosen, you will join other people from national and international civil society organisations as well as national human rights institutions who will explain the human rights situation in your country to Geneva diplomats working with the United Nations. Participants will also suggest recommendations that Geneva diplomats can use at your country's actual UPR review. This is what happens in the meeting. Each pre-session is country-specific and lasts for an hour. The panellists or speakers there are five to six speakers per pre-session. Each speaker has between five to seven minutes to make its presentation. The UPR Info Moderator The UPR Info Moderator introduces the state's UPR record 
and gives the floor to civil society speakers. The audience. The pre-sessions are public, although diplomats are the most important participants because they are the people who will make the recommendations to your state at its actual UPR review. You can participate by giving key information on the human rights situation of your country, presenting examples of recommendations that states can make to your country during the actual review. How can you prepare for the pre-session? Participate in a free online UPR info training session which will help you find out more about the pre-session meeting and the skills you will need to persuade diplomats to use your recommendations at your country's UPR review. Contact UPR Info about the dates of the next training and any other questions you have about the UPR. Prepare a five-minute visual presentation which you can present during the pre-session meeting. This statement should include 1. Information about your organisation or the group of organisations that you are representing, including if your organisation has been active in the UPR process, other human rights mechanisms, e.g. the Committee of the Rights of the Child, or any national consultations organised by your state. 2. A short introduction explaining the number of issues you will raise and in which order. 3. Your priority issues. You should follow these steps for each issue that you are raising below. Step 1. Use UPR's info database to find all the recommendations that your country has received on your issue. Make sure you record all of these and don't forget to note which countries made those recommendations. Example. During Albania's second UPR, it received 57 recommendations on child rights, 34 of which were about violence against children and child trafficking. Countries who made those recommendations on child rights were from all regions of the world. Step 2. Describe how the situation on your issue has evolved in the country since the last review. What have been recent achievements and what are the remaining gaps? Has there been any evolution on my issue since the last review? Example A large study on violence against children in Albania, 2013, found that 69% of children were victims of psychological abuse, 59% of physical violence, 11% of sexual abuse. There is a lack of online protection measures exposing children to bullying, violence and exploitation. More than 200 cases of online child abuse were reported between 2016 and 2018. There is a significant lack of data on children trafficking. Reports estimate that over 5,000 children were victims of trafficking and smuggling. Children experienced sex trafficking and forced labour in Albania, especially during tourist season. Although violence against children and trafficking are against the law, few legal actions have been taken to report those responsible for these crimes or provide remedies to children. Source Pre-Session Statement of Children's Human Rights Centre of Albania in 2019 Step 3 Suggest two or three specific recommendations and two or three advance questions that you would like recommending states to make to your country. Which recommendations would I like to make to my country? Which questions would I like to ask? Example 1. Take legal actions to report the perpetrators of violence against children and trafficking of children. 2. Provide remedies to the children victims of violence and or trafficking. 3. Develop a national action plan for the elimination of violence in schools. Tip. Make sure your presentation is short, clear, precise and eye-catching so that diplomats attending the meetings can remember your important recommendations. You will only have five to seven minutes to convince them. Tip. 
Practice your presentation to make sure that it does not take longer than seven minutes. Remember to speak clearly so that everyone in the meeting will be able to hear you. Now is the time to make any last minute changes to what you want to say. How can you participate in the Geneva pre-session meeting? When you're in the pre-session meeting, the moderator will ask people on the panel to give their presentations, including you. After everyone has finished presenting, Geneva diplomats might ask you some questions about your issue. Tip. Think in advance about some questions that you may be asked about your issue. Prepare short answers that you can use. For example, prepare an update on each of the recommendations that states made to your country on your specific issue at your country's last UPR. What if I don't know the answer to a question? Don't worry. Say that you need to do some research before responding and ask if you can contact them later with the answer. You can also choose not to answer a question if you feel uncomfortable or you can ask the moderator to repeat the question if it wasn't clear. The moderator is there to help. If there is enough time left at the end of the meeting, you might be able to give a very short concluding statement about your human rights issue. This might include a summary of the situation on your issue, repeating one recommendation you made. The importance of child participation and children's involvement in the UPR process. A brief explanation of your expectations for the review of your country and what needs to be addressed urgently. Tip. Prepare a concluding statement in advance in case you get the chance to say it. This is your last opportunity in the meeting to persuade states to prioritise your issue and use your recommendations at your country's UPR review. How can I participate at the review? All the recommendations from the recommending states are presented to the state under review one month after the pre-session at the review. In this important three and a half hour meeting, States discuss the human rights situation in that country and the issues that state should prioritise in their next four and a half years. This meeting takes place in Geneva. This is what happens. 30 minutes. The state under review explains progress it has made in realising human rights since the last review. 140 minutes. States make recommendations and ask questions. During this discussion, states recommend to the state under review to take actions to improve its human rights situation. 30 minutes. The state under review answers questions about the human rights situation of its country and addresses some issues raised during the discussion. 10 minutes. The state under review makes final comments. Information that describes the human rights situation of the state under review is provided in three main documents. Each document provides a different point of view on the human rights situation in that country. The National Report Written by the state under review following broad national consultations. The Compilation of United Nations Information Treaty Bodies Special Procedures UN Agencies Summary of other stakeholders' submissions Summary of reports written by National Human Rights Institutions CSOs NGOs These are the documents used for the review of the human rights situation. Recommending states use these documents to learn about the human rights situation in the country being reviewed and to prepare their comments questions and recommendations to the state under review. Recommendation A. If a state supports a recommendation, it makes a promise in front of all UN member states to implement the recommendation before the next UPR review. The state under review can decide to support or note a recommendation received at the UPR session. A state cannot refuse a recommendation. 
Recommendation B. If a state notes a recommendation, it means that the state might not implement or implement partially the recommendation before the next UPR review. It will think about responding about this important issue. How can you participate in the review meeting? Only state representatives are able to speak at this meeting. However, you might be able to attend the UPR session in person, if you can be in Geneva at that time. Hold or participate in events on the situation of HR in your country or at the UN. Side event. Provide press briefings in your country or even in Geneva by using email or social media. Attend the UPR session online in your own country by watching UN webcast live or at a later time. How can I participate after the review? A few days after the review, the draft report containing all the recommendations that your country received can be found on the OHCHR website. About four to six months later, your state needs to agree which recommendations it will implement before its next UPR review and which recommendations it will not be able to fully implement. The Human Rights Council will then fully adopt your state's report containing all of the UPR recommendations and the promises it has made to realise these recommendations over the next four and a half years. Let's look at the journey of the state's recommendations. 1. The Review States make recommendations to the state under review. Two to four days later. 2. Adoption of the draft report. The draft report containing all recommendations made at the review is adopted. At this stage, the state under review can leave all recommendations pending or can already support or note some recommendations. The decision, supported or noted, is not final. Approximately four months later. 3. Adoption of the final report. The state under review has approximately four months to give its final answer to recommendations received. It must say which recommendations are supported and which are noted. At the plenary session of the Human Rights Council, the final report is adopted. At this stage, the final report contains all the recommendations and a document produced by the state called an abdemdum contains the state's answers to all recommendations. Where can I find the recommendations made to my country? Look on the UPR Info database for all the information on the UPR recommendations for any country. Here you will find the status of the recommendations and the country's responses to them. You can filter recommendations by state under review, by recommending state, by UPR cycle, by status of recommendation and by thematic. Have you found your country's last UPR recommendations? Record one recommendation that is important to you. How you can participate in the UPR implementation phase. You now have another very important role to play. To support the UPR implementation phase, you can 1. Raise awareness of the UPR recommendations. People need to be aware of what the government has committed to improve for children and adults living in your country. You could raise awareness by informing the media, including newspapers, TV, radio and social media, national parliamentarians, embassies in your country, UN agencies in your country, relevant government ministries, children and adults in your community and other members of the public. Tip. If it hasn't done so already, ask your government to translate the recommendations into national languages so that people can easily understand them. Use real examples of how the recommendation affects certain groups of the population. This can help people relate the recommendations to their own lives and experiences. Can you think of ways of raising awareness about your issue with lots of people that you might not know? What might you say?
2. Support the implementation of UPR recommendations. By connecting and working together with different stakeholders, including representatives from civil society, national human rights institutions, the media, UN agencies, and even government officials and diplomats from other countries, it's possible to find out what others are doing. You might be able to join forces on activities like campaigns, for example on the climate crisis, child marriage or education, and help to push for the government with the biggest responsibility to make the changes needed. 3. Monitor the state's progress to implement the recommendations. I see that adults make commitments and don't respect them as they should. We have to find ways to force them to respect what they've decided. Boy aged 12 to 14, Côte d'Ivoire. As a member of civil society, you can report to the international community on the progress your country is making to implement UPR recommendations and challenges it is having. These are some of the things you could do. Provide updates to states that have made recommendations to your country by giving or sending them short fact sheets, including recommendations on your issue and how well your state is implementing them. You can do this at any time. Send your information to a Child Rights Geneva-based organisation like Child Rights Connect, who can provide a two-minute update on the UPR process in your country at a Human Rights Council meeting. These meetings are held in Geneva in February, June and September. Provide an update on the situation of human rights in your country in a short report to OHCHR. This midterm report is due about two and a half years after your country's UPR. There are no strict guidelines for submitting a UPR midterm report. UPR Info can help you prepare this, including giving you a format to use. Which of these activities would you like to do? What extra help might you need? Further support. You can go to UPR Info's website www.upr-info.org for information about each country's UPR process, including details about recommendations by each state under review. If you have any questions or need advice on the UPR process, you can send an email directly to UPR Info. Go to Child Rights Connect's website for examples of their extensive expertise supporting child human rights defenders to advocate for their rights and raise awareness to ensure that children's voices are heard at the highest level of decision making. If you are interested in getting involved in the UPR, contact the team directly by email. Your feedback and recommendations. Child Rights Connect and UPR Info are here to support you to participate in the UPR. They welcome your feedback and suggestions on how to improve the guide and the UPR process itself. Please send any comments or recommendations to the emails above. Useful websites. To find out more about the participation of NGOs at the Universal Periodic Review, go to the OHCHR website. The following are OHCHR publications. A Handbook for Civil Society, Civil Society Space and the United Nations Human Rights System. The following are UPR Info publications. UPR Info Pre-Sessions, The Civil Society Compendium, A Comprehensive Guide for Civil Society Organisations Engaging in the UPR. Useful Tools. The following can be found at the UPR Info database. Template of a fact sheet. Fact sheet example.